All right, I'm um, just going to go over a trend review. There's a YM. All right, so a couple of things to note is um, the market on the left hand side uh, is the higher time frame of the high brick size, right hand side is a lower time frame of the low brick size. So I'm using 40 tick bricks and 10 tick bricks. All right, on the left hand, 40, on the right hand side, 10 tick. It's the same concept as uh, higher time frame, lower time frame. All right, so what do we see here is a market that rallies down, right? So you have selling pressure coming from this area. So after that, to take a look at what happens. Market goes to test that area. Couple of things to note, this is the first test. Second thing to note, it's in a downtrend. Given these two things, that it's um, all of that, what I just said, it it really sets up this trade quite nicely in that um, you have trend on your side, you have level on your side, basically resistance. And um, and there's heavy, uh, this was a breakout as well, like down here, you see the 12, it's pretty big. It's the biggest volume, it's 72 bricks and goes down. So selling pressure is there, broke down. And uh, that's about it. So on its test, we see what happens. Here you have the market, it's going into that resistance area, that turning point, up, up, up. And over here, it does what? It climaxes. And it's at that area that it climaxes, meaning at resistance, it climaxes at resistance. After that, it goes up, down, up. So this is important too. But what, what I think is more important is this behavior here. This up, down, up, down, all this, this is typically, the, I mean, it's difficult to tell, but a lot of times this is the end of a phase. Up, down, up, down, up, down, like whatever. It just, it, to me, it's, it's talking to me, telling me that markup has ended and distribution is about to ensue. Then you have this um, a movement up and then finally it breaks. Oh, shit. Go back now. Okay, so goes up and 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 then it breaks down. All right, so that's it. Selling is selling is in. You've taken out multiple lows. You have a breakout that fails, and um, you have a climax. You have your change of behavior, right? And then you have these low volume tests. So you have 56 up, you have about 19 down, and then you have these low volume tests of six and nine. So there's no demand. There's no demand, period. You know, what is the ratio 19 to six? It's three to one. So this is six, this is 19. It's only one third, about one third of the volume. And relatively speaking, it's less than this, this, and, the, and that rally. So we could say that here you're seeing a lack of demand. And that's also evident in the volume print where you see a big volume and then what happens? Nothing there. So it's a test of resistance and it goes down. Done. All right. And, uh, and that's about it. So what are the key learnings here? I'm sorry that the chart keeps refreshing. So I have a setting on that refreshes the data and... Um, it takes me to the latest uh, price. But anyway, coming back here, the key thing to notice is this up, down, up, down, up, down hinge. This hinge is saying I'm done with markup and I'm entering distribution, but not any pattern will tell you that, okay? It just because it's going up, down, up, down doesn't mean, okay, it's going to reverse. It could be absorption. It could be something else. You don't know. It's only by seeing other behaviors and other uh, price volume action can you say that this is possibly the end of markup. What is there that tells you that? It's this, the climax. The climax after that, because climax is also ending action. So this is telling you it's ending and this is telling you it's ending. Meaning the climax is telling you it's ending and this hinge up, down, up, down, up, down, this, 
thing here is also telling you an ending. And this is a little bit confusing because it rallies. But after, when it does this, it gives you a clear indication that yes, markup is ended, distribution has started, and actually we're on the right-hand side now, and there's a lack of volume in terms of six and nine. Relatively speaking, it's both less than 19, and it's less than the climactic volume here of 56. And uh, so it just, it, ripe, it, it, it makes it very probable that there's gonna be reversal. The other thing is, I wanna see a breakout. Where is the breakout? It's right there. That is the biggest volume in about three bars and four down bars. So it breaks this level on um, increasing volume from one to six, and then has follow through as well. So that's very important that it has some type of breakout otherwise, because when you think about it, trends going up or down, they're just a series of breakouts, right? I mean, just go breakout, follow through, becomes a rally, pullback, another breakout, follow through, rally, pullback. So that's really what it is. I mean, every single time that's what you see in any trend. You see it's, it's a series of breakouts going up or down and, as, and that uh, rallies, right? The breakout becomes a follow through, becomes a rally. And that's it. So after that, you see this move up, low volume, and retest. Is there anything else that you can decipher? Yeah, right there. I've explained this a couple of times already. Distribution and accumulation, somehow, you know, uh, smart money knows what the highs and lows are. All right, they just know what the highs and lows are. I mean, there's just no doubt in my mind because they create the highs and lows. Why is it that this near the high has the biggest volume in 43 down bricks? 43 bars. That, that thing right there has the biggest volume. That right there is the volume off the top. Right there is the volume off the top, has a little up thrust, and that leads to selling to the downside. Right there, there's the volume off the top. The selling high. Buy low, sell high, that's sell high. That print right there is selling high. There's the biggest red, you see this red here? Biggest in the 43 down bricks. And then finally the wave tells me that yeah, it's legit. And the test of it goes right to the test and pukes. All right, so once again, you know, a um, couple of things that really matter in, um, in, in um, the first thing is your higher time frame trend and level. These two things are critical. Nothing else matters um, before these two things. The higher time frame trend and level are the foundation for the next step. So first you find the foundation, the, the high time frame trend and level, examining that, and then you move to the lower time frame. Do not go bottom up because bottom up leads to losses. You want to go top down because higher time frame means bigger traders and you want the bigger traders to be on your side that's why you don't go bottom up because you won't have the bigger traders on your side you need to go have the bigger traders on the side then the smaller traders on your side not not the vice versa where it's like a conflict so first thing is high time frame um with the um, trended level, then lower time frame to see what is happening at that particular level. And typically what's happening at that particular level that should get you confident 
is buying or selling and uh, a change in trend. And that sets up an edge, all right? Because you have the higher time frame uh, trend, you have the higher time frame level. We have the lower time frame reaction from that level because the lower time frame traders are selling it and the higher time frame traders are selling it. You have both these groups on your side. And um, you see the opportunity. It's also getting interesting right here. There's no volume off the top. I thought this was volume off the top here, but I think this just had to do with the session. Anyway, long story short, have a good day. Take care. Bye.